Hey guys, Mike here. Um, got a few like questions over YouTube about um, kind of my workflow, I guess you would call it, uh, for my editing. And um, a lot of people seem to think that I use Sony Vegas less than After Effects. Uh, um, I guess I could have said I use After Effects more than Sony Vegas. Yeah, uh, that's not true. I use Sony Vegas about 99% of the time. What you see in front of me is kind of like the basic idea behind my uh, workflow, editing process, whatever. Um, I like to keep a few things in mind. I'm not going to go into all of them because I'm probably going to do some series or episodes or, you know, just release some steady tips and guides or whatever. Um, We'll see how I'm feeling about it, but uh, basically, there are a few things I want to point out um, about my workflow and things that you know you can take home to uh, your own Sony Vegas or whatever. And I swear to God, if you're not an expert in Sony Vegas, you better not even touch After Effects. But anyway, um, so Sony Vegas, uh, there are a few things that you need to understand. First of which is don't Skype me. Anyway, uh, is this thing down here, right here. This is an audio track. And the great thing about this audio track is that it shows the wavelengths and peaks of everything. So you can see where this peak is. You know, you can see where a drop in the music is, which, you know, is when like it goes, builds up a steady beat and then boom, it hits you. It's kind of like dubstep. It's like the thing behind dubstep. So like right here, I got killed right there because that's where the beat dropped. Anyway, um, so the thing about a good edit is the sync involved. If you sync it well, that means you put an effort, that means that it's going to be a good edit, you know? So don't try and throw these flashy effects in there that you got off of some YouTube video combining seven different things and after effects and everything like that. No, I mean, Sony Vegas can accomplish the majority of what's in After Effects minus some of the plugins and presets that you have and some of the 3D ability that you have. But, you know, other than that, there's pretty much golden with Sony Vegas for a nice clean edit, you know. I, I mean, I, I have not edited anything over the top in my career, but, you know, I've had quite a few, I would call successful edits. You know, so um, take my word for it. You don't need After Effects to make something look good. But uh, anyway, the second thing that I want to go over is what your project properties are. You know, almost every single game you will find will come to you with a 30 frames per second kind of like rendered out, right? So keep it that way inside your project. Unless, you know, the footage changes, you know, I, ha I have some GoPro stuff that I've been editing with that comes it's with to me with 60 frames per second, and then that's when you go right here, you click on this, and you change your, your settings and everything like that to match. But, you know, until that point, keep it at 29. Now, the second part of that second point is the rendering. Um, for edits, not for gameplay, but for edits, you want to go to your video, you want to render at 60 frames per second. You know, all this other crap, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure if this is what you want, you know. I'm sure someone's going to come bitch and complain to me about, you know, this is too low, this should be at 8 or whatever. Well, whatever, you know. As long as you're rendering out at 60 frames per second, that is ideal for an edit because everything looks smoother, you know. Um, and then in terms of what you're going to be, what your file type is, that depends on your game, whether you want like a little bit more contrast, whether you want to upload it to YouTube, blah, blah, blah. That's all for a different video, you know. And then my last point is um, pay attention to each clip, you know, and uh, kind of make sure you do, you keep it consistent in terms of what you turn off, like the disable, resample. This is key because what, um, 
what Vegas will do is pretty much fuck up the clip whenever it's moving or something like that. If you leave the resample on, it's kind of like a con like a consistent motion blur kind of thing. So when you like zoom in, and it kind of like blends the frames and everything. And it looks like crap, especially in um, what you call it in Gears of War. So you know, like uh, like this right here, I put a fair amount of effort into it. It's 10 seconds long. I put about 10 minutes in. You know. That's a minute per second. And right here, there's nothing right there, you know? So, I mean, that's like lack of effort, but whatever you done. I'll, I'll, I'll tag this on the end of the video to show you exactly what you can do in Vegas in a matter of 10 minutes, you know? And uh, as long as you sync it well and everything like that, I consider that a fairly good edit, you know? Because the whole thing about editing a montage or editing a video is capturing the viewer's attention. If you can't capture the viewer's attention, I don't think you accomplished it well, or you accomplished the goal of the thing, which is to have the viewer watch the gameplay. So, you know, it doesn't matter how good the editing is and how good the effects are, if I stop at 35 seconds for a 10 minute long video, uh, you failed. But anyway. There's going to be more to come, you know, you can comment and let me know exactly what you think about me uh, going through a workflow, you know, maybe I'll start from scratch on a project and I'll show you guys exactly what uh, what I do. Uh, see, like, I put a fair amount of effort in this, like, see this, matches up to a drop, this matches up to a peak to a drop, peak to a drop, peak to a drop, and, like, things like that. Uh, anyway, so let me know, um, and this is already too long. but. Whatever. Have a nice day.